Morning guys, another beautiful day here on the farm. I'm working on something important today, important to me, and that's something that's gonna make my chores easier here on the farm, and that's important. As you start getting a little bit older, one of the things that I can't stand is squatting and bending. I wanna try to set up my farm for the future so that as I get older, I'll have an easier time and it's not gonna be so hard on your body doing all this work. I mean, fun. One of the many conveniences that I've already put in place to make it easier for me as I get older is that all the structures that I make that house the animals are tall enough for me to get in. Because for me, that's very important. I don't want to make something really tiny and then I have a real hard time going in to clean out the bedding or something like that. <laughs> Everywhere I go, there's these berries around the farm. And I just help myself whenever I feel like it. Oh, these are coming over. It's another good reason too to go with raised garden beds. I've started doing all of these raised beds made out of pressure treated lumber, but of course it costs a lot of money. So I've just done one layer for now, but next year I could add another layer and another layer. And I'm thinking about 30 inches tall is good enough because these metal raised beds right now that I did, they're 30 inches high and that's good enough. It's nice to work at this level and it's not gonna break your back. You don't have to squat, you don't have to bend. <laughs> and that's just a back saver, you know what I'm saying, guys? Olive, what are you doing? You're getting wet. You're getting wet. There's a sprinkler on. You don't care about the sprinkler? You're getting all wet. We got some climbing long beans coming in nicely right now. Olive, where's Molly? Where's Molly? Molly, you okay? You okay? What are you doing in there? You feel hot? <laughs> You're crazy! Hey, your sister's crazy! So let me just show you quick what I've been working on the past couple days. We've had a bout of nice weather. <laughs> and since I'm finished my goose caboose, I decided to work on this because I'm getting tired of squatting and bending. So I'm just going to go over quickly what I've done the past couple days, and then today we're going to complete it all together. After putting down the geotech style, I hammered in the spikes so they're past the frost line and it's easy peasy. Then I simply started building out the frame. Sometimes it's not easy when you're working alone. But I figured out little tricks here and there and can manage fine. 
I really enjoy building things anyways, and I really like honing my carpentry skills as I go. Mostly use pressure treated lumber for this little project, and bonus thing is I didn't even spend a dime extra on any wood because I already had all this wood in stock. It's a lean-to style shed that's covered with barn board on three sides and I made sure to direct it against the western winds. And after finishing off all the barn board, I just used the farm tin roofing for the roof and I made myself easy and cut it in five foot lengths. I ended up using just a three quarter crush gravel for the flooring in there. It's very uneven and I think this works best. So far so good and time to finish her up. Okay, so this is what I have done so far. We got the side walls on, we got the back wall on, and the side wall there, I just have to finish up the corners. It's not looking too shabby, you know? It's big enough for me to be able to get in, you know? I made this a little bit lower so that it just covers my head. And I'm gonna, I just better go check in on the chickens and the cats, and then I'm gonna get setting up here. What's really gonna make my life easier? Most of the chickens are looking good. You know, there's a couple of hens from each flock that are, eh, they're kind of, they're kind of looking a little scratchy, you know, that the rooster's doing his thing too much. <laughs> Let's go check on the chicks. So as you can see people, these chicks are getting pretty big. This feeder, I just filled this up yesterday and it's already just at the bottom there. That's crazy, they're eating fast. There's only six chicks here. <laughs> Look, they're all looking at me. I also have these incubators going. I did have 14 eggs in here, but there's only eight eggs left. The rest of them were not fertile. And this one, has 14 eggs, but it's not yet seven days for you to candle them to make sure that they're fertile. You don't wanna leave the unfertile eggs incubating because as it gets close to the 14th, 15th, 16th day, there's a chance that they can explode and then they'll contaminate all the rest of the eggs and you don't want that. Olive, you want eggs? You know, sometimes you get a cracked egg or one egg might be, you know, have some malformity on it. You know, the calcium is not formed properly. These dogs love the eggs, love. They lick it right up in a matter of seconds. <laughs> There's eight eggs in here. This batch is due to hatch in 10 more days. <laughs> so 10 more days, we should have a bunch more chicks that are gonna have to join these little guys. And these guys are gonna get too big for this brooder. And I'm gonna have to then start working on my one grow out coop, <laughs> which I haven't done yet.
Maggie, are you okay? How are you doing, Maggie? You comfy? Are you comfy in the hammock? Kittens are doing amazing, eh, guys? Man, it's so awesome to see them grow up, and they grow up so fast. I still haven't been able to figure out if they're boys or girls yet. That's why I haven't named them. But uh, hopefully soon I'll be able to see like a couple of little balls there, and then I'll be able to tell that those are boys. And that's easy enough, right? But they're still a little young. So as you can see guys, the cat's out of the bag. This is a countertop with the built-in sink. And I just need to set it all up obviously. I got this plumber's putty. It's like that goopy stuff. I like to use this whenever I'm installing a new sink strainer because it gets a good seal and it'll never leak and it lasts for decades. Bunch like this and then you roll it. You gotta roll it so that it fills up that whole sink strainer. You roll it up into a little snake type thing. See, like this. See, this is the sink strainer and I just put the whole thing around like so, like so, stab it on a little bit. Took me a while to find this little gizmo. This side is a half inch and this side fits on a hose. <laughs> so, you know, this half inch side is the same size as the threads on the faucet and which is going to allow me to attach this faucet to a garden hose. But first, I better put some Teflon tape to try to get a good seal. When you're putting on Teflon tape, you got to make sure you go with the way you're screwing it. Because if you put the Teflon tape on the wrong way, the only problem is this side of the garden hose doesn't twist. This doesn't twist. So you're going to have to twist the hose. Good thing is about these legs is that they're adjustable, eh? Like this can screw out, so I'll be able to, this is outside, it's on the ground, so it's not level for sure. I'm gonna have to mess with it. This work table is all stainless steel. And I mean, I could have made it out of a cheaper material. I'm sure that I could even make it myself. But I felt like it was worth it to spend the money on something that's gonna last basically forever because it's stainless steel it's not gonna rust or if it does rust it's gonna rust very little but I made this roof over top of it anyway so it's gonna be somewhat out of the weather if the snow or the rain comes in on an angle then it might get a little wet but I think for the most part We've been on this farm for two years, and I know that the main wind comes from that side. So it's going to be somewhat protected from that angled snow and rain. So check it out guys, I got this awesome sink installed. 
The only trouble is, I don't like the faucet. First of all, it's leaking at the bottom, and it's kind of a Mickey Mouse cheapy kind of faucet anyways. But I do have water. <laughs> yeah! No longer bending to wash my hands. No longer bending to wash the chicken feeders. See, it's all leaking out the side, so really, this is not really suitable anyways because I need something with a really tall neck, you know, like a big goose neck. Dexter, what are you doing, buddy? Hey, what are you doing? The only trouble with me mounting this hose reel right here is that they come with the leader hose, eh? But it's nowhere near the length that I need, so I'm going to have to hit the hardware store again when I go and get that faucet. And i got to run it from the tip there, all along the ground here, and then I'll be done. So what do you think, guys? Am I on the right track here? You know, I'll be able to put a soap dispenser here and wash my hands with soap. <laughs> I always wash my hands all over the farm wherever the water hydrants are, but there's no soap there. Now I don't have to bend. I don't have to squat. I can fill up my water bottle and I'm good to go. What I'm going to do is hit the hardware store and get some kind of a, a black drain pipe and then run it along here. And then I'll be able to exit it over there and it'll just soak into the ground. So that hose fitting did work well though guys. You see, I got that hose connected to the faucet and it's running down there and I got it tucked underneath there and then it comes out over here and it goes to the water hydrant and I'm able to shut off the water at the faucet, of course with the faucet handle, and I can shut off the water with the splitter or I can shut the main water line down. So at least this brings us one step closer to efficiency here on the farm. You know, <laughs> anything that we can do to make our life easier, it's going to help in the long run. And this is just one of those things. i got a couple more odds and ends to do here, but it's pretty well built. It's done. I can move on to the next project. Yeah! Anyways, if you're curious as to how we installed our five water hydrants in and around the whole property here, watch the video below. I'm going to put the video and you can keep on watching. <laughs> and that was really one of the first things we did to make life easier for us on the farm. And that being said, guys, pound the like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe and follow along on our journey. Thanks for watching and you guys take care, okay? We'll see you on the next episode.